Yes, in fact, you can use any polish, any compound by hand or with machine, regardless of what the directions say. And here we have the ass end of the 2020 Volkswagen Passat plastic tail lenses. Now what I want to also highlight is this thing called swirl marks. Now most people are familiar with swirl marks in paint, but swirl marks can display themselves just about anywhere. Now to clarify, swirl marks is a pattern created by reflected light. Now there's three things that need to come together to produce what most people call swirl marks. You need a scratched surface that's reflective, you need a light source, and more precisely, you need a round light source. I'm gonna first use uh, some tape to really isolate the tail lens. I'll fast forward this. Right there, you can see some skid marks that do not belong. <laughs> That's not part of the original equipment moment. Now to really bump up the jam, I'm gonna take some 2500 grit sand paper to verify there. I'm not going to use a sanding block because I'm not trying to retain the precision or the control that a sanding block would allow me. And this is also why I taped off those areas is now that I can freely sand the area. And let me just talk a little bit because what I'm doing is I'm introducing 2,500 grit sanding marks. The goal of sandpaper, well, let me reduce it down to this one word, control. So sandpaper offers a level of control as far as refining the surface that a buffer with a traditional buffing pad does not allow for. Never apply anything in a circular fashion because A, it produces swirl marks. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a uniform scratch pattern so that every blemish in this uh, tail lens now, once I continue to uh, develop that uniform scratch pattern, I know that the deepest defect will be 20, the equivalent of 2500 grit. Hopefully that makes sense. For example, if I did not create a, a totally uniform scratch pattern and there's still some deep gouges in this and I go to buff it, well, guess what's gonna still remain once I'm done buffing and I'm removing the scratches that I don't want to be there? Well, there's still gonna be some deep uh, gouges. Just to verify, I went back and forth, left and right, down here. I'm going to maximize the video moment and I'm going to show you polishing by hand. Now there's a natural character line right here on the tail lens that's molded into it. So this comes down and then this kind of drops down a little more sharply. So I'm going to section this off right at that character line and I'm going to be polishing this by hand. So here is my favorite go-to polish for many, many reasons. Once again, you can use this by hand or machine. Now, many of you will default to hand because you don't want to buy a buffer and buffering pads and learn how to use a buffer because it's really, really scary and I get it. You're not looking for perfection, you're just looking for better results. So I'm gonna show you 2,500 grit sanding marks. Just as a heads up, is not considered overly aggressive in the world of wet sanding. Microfiber cloth, I always recommend a microfiber cloth. There's my little dollop of polish. And what I want to do is just isolate the bottom with the top. And I'm going to show you how much effort and the results that you can. Well, because most tail lenses are pretty uniform in how rigid they are, unlike clear coats. Clear coats, it's all over the board. How soft, how hard, it's much more diversity. So, I think this would be a fair representation of most tail lenses on the market. Now this is a 2020 model, so it has not endured the elements of weather and sun exposure like maybe your 10 or 15 year old car does. So you're gonna have to factor those things into the equation. 
So at this point, things are looking pretty shiny, but do not underestimate the power of lighting. My goal as a professional detailer is to make sure that I produce results that look uh, superior in direct sunlighting. But as a professional, I also know that different light sources will um, reveal different blemishes, different flaws, different uh, good things. It's not all negative, but light is critical. So I will verify with my customer, okay, do you want me to achieve perfection based on you looking at your car in direct sunlight? Pretty much every customer I've ever had says yes because I inform them that if they're gonna scrutinize their car under fluorescent lights in their garage, every time they go out into their garage to get another car, I said, you need to let me know. Um, generally, if I nail it in the sunlight, I know I've nailed it in the fluorescence. The difference would be LED lights and the different lumens. That's where things really can get tricky. Now you can use a backing plate for this even if you wanted. Like for example, here's a very rigid backing plate. It's made out of acrylic, but it's got a soft pad over here. So I could put some polish along here, and now I, I can apply more pressure because this is a mostly flat surface. I'm not having to work or be constrained by nuances of body panels. So I can sit here and really lay into this at a much higher level than just with my hand. So now I have a backing plate, which you could then call this a buffing pad. So if I was finessing this in the real world, I would go in really heavy handed with like, let's say I'm choosing the backing plate, but then to refine it, I'm going to back off the pressure and just finesse this back and forth. Very light pressure, because what I want to do is finesse those scratches. Let's go in for a deep dive. Got my lens. Let's see, I'm liking the results. And this is produced by hand. Now, once again, if you're gonna make a comparison with this plastic lens to the clear coat plastic, this would be considered very soft in relation to the very, very hard clear coat on that white paint. But as a beginner, you won't know the difference, but I am liking what I see. So let's take this off, this line of separation. We've got a nice refined circle and it's not um, dispersing or scattering all the light to creating that swirled mark effect. So can you polish plastic? Yes, you can. Can you wet sand plastic? Yes, you can. Can you do it by hand? Yes, you can.